Out of the two-wheeled action, we head now to the Triple One Sports and Saloons, our biggest class of the day. And in fact, because of the way that the day ran, we had to combine the categories. So classes A to E on track, all at the same time. That's close to 45 cars at the moment. And here they come down towards turn one. Woohoo! It's going to be wild, Greg, and it always is in this class. Very spectacular to watch as George Bezadenite gets a great start. That's exactly where he will want to be. Uh, George Smallberger going right behind. Smallberger just having some fun in the GTC machine. Of course, that'll be one of the Class X contenders when GTC makes its debut later on this year. And as you can see in the mid-pack, things are starting to happen already. Oh, 42 off the track. That is not what you want to be seeing from the reigning champion of the Triple One Sports and Saloons, Craig Buerta, parked on the sideline. And it looks like problems there for the 3-4 car as well. Well, that's Robert Stoltz, unfortunately, out of it as we've got uh, the pace car moving out of the way. Pace car was brought out uh, because of Craig Buerta's little incident, but we're back in racing again. You know, a battle of the Georges at the front, Poseidon versus Smallberger. Chad Vence is starting to make his way through the field. Keep an eye on that Alfa Romeo. It's an incredibly quick machine. And on his tail, in fact, is the second of the Alfa Romeos. It's a slightly older one with Clive Densham at the wheel. That is Ryan Cranshire in full flight through turn one with the two Alphas right on his tail. Now under braking, they come down towards turn two. Next con corner, Vanna Peterson putting the pressure onto Smallberger. And it's going to be a three-way Volkswagen battle there for second place. The uh, BMW of Joel Silver starting to come into the mix as well, along with Ryan Cranchai and the two Alphas. But further back, this is Robin Kruger's point of view, coming out of Speed and Sound Suite, heading onto the back straight. A very, very talented young lady driver comes out of Super Hatch originally, and now fighting in the Steam Shore Combustion Polo in Triple Ones. Well, here we go. This might be a change up in the front, but George Bezadino says no way through there. And uh, running a little wide there, the GTC car of George Smallberger. And right in the action is also Louis Robertson. Unfortunately, that's Werner Peterson, who was right up in the top five. He's parked on the sidelines now. Issues there with that golf, unfortunately. Check it flag, though, for the Poseidon Oak race. One victory right on his tail is the GTI of uh, Smallberger. And I can tell you, the two Georges will be back at it for race number two. Wenzel comes through for third, eating Ryan Cranshaw and Joel Silver. Clive Densham ahead of Harry Arangis in the Porsche and Bruce Turner. Now they just refuel and get ready for race number two. It was a big break in proceedings before they got out onto track. Lights are on and uh, the sun is about to dip out of the sky as we onboard here with Cranchai on the tailpiece of Chad Vensel. Great to see Vensel back in racing as well. He spends a huge amount of time tuning cars and that Mopar engined alpha of his certainly has got some uh, race pace. Well, as you always say, the TV doesn't do it justice, just how dark it is. In fact, there was lots of chatter on the start line as to who had lights and who didn't in this class because you were going to need them to see where you were going. Eddie Leach on the tailpiece of uh, Fancel and looking to sneak through there on, look at the looks of things, Wayne Wall. And he's having some fun in the 924. There's another Porsche. We saw him up the front end right at the word go, Harry Arangis, and he's already looking for opportunities. But at the front end, oh, the Shield GTI runs in the dirt. Yes, he is a Ray Championship contender as well, but it's uh, the uh, production car you're driving today, Mr. Smallberger. Oh, a tremendous amount of understeer there as he just uh, overcooked uh, that right hand through Cecil. Unfortunately, has lost out. And uh, George Bozadino now under big pressure. Chad Vensel looks like he's the man that can drive fast in the dark. There's the 132 back on track. George Smallberger in the Shield at GTI. And he's just behind Joel Silver. Speed and sound BMW going well, but unfortunately just uh, under attack now. Issues for one of the cars pulling into pit lane there. It looks like one of the golfs. I think that's probably going to be Harold Henning, unfortunately, in the Mark 1. The all toy spares machine parked on the sideline and out of race number two. Oh, and a little bit of touching and rubbing there, and Rory Eden loses out. He ends up over the Cecil uh, breaking marker into an Excon corner, and Donnie Dassel lives to fight another day. A little bit of action between the two of them. Dr. Philip Mayer here in the 924 Porsche fighting with his good friend, and of course Mark Harvey just ahead of him there in some new colours. And whoa, speaking of new colours, a new man, a welcome return for Chad Vensel, and he's hit the front. Well, that Alpha is immaculate and a uh, big turnover of spectators in the pits to check their car out as we go on board of the 232 of Bruce Turner and enjoy a good drive somewhere in the top five. Yeah, a great drive there from Bruce Turner. He certainly is getting to grips considering the fact that he's got a new sponsor involved. KLX BMW stepping up with Paul Hill. Oh, that is huge. How much smoke can you get out of a Porsche Boxster? Let's find out. Well, unfortunately, that is Richard DeRuis parked on the sideline with a blown Porsche engine. And uh, yes, I think that might just be our leader in the smoke. It is Chad Benzel, check and flag. Thanks a lot. Only just caught it. Well done, cameraman. George Bezadeno there in second place. He's had a good day. Chad Benzel with the window. Uh, third place, Ryan Cranchai. Good drive ahead of Joel Silver in fourth. Harry Ranges in fifth. Bruce Turner, Robin Kruger, and Javi Moran. We had a problem, and I was right there for second place, and then uh, probably 
ending up somewhere at eight, but uh, at least I finished the race, so that's, that's important.